my fellow makeup enthusiasts. Welcome back to my perfectly healthy expression of makeup enthusiasm. My name is Lainey and today we're gonna do a super simple Makeup 101 video. So this was inspired by my dear friend. We go all the way back to junior high when we were in a performing group together. Her daughter is starting to wear makeup. And so she contacted me thinking of me as someone who actually knows anything at all about makeup, which I don't really, but I really like to play with it. But I do feel like I'm a pretty decent person to contact because I will not tell you BS. That got me thinking that I haven't seen a whole lot of videos of this nature. So I wanted to go through a makeup application and talk about what is necessary and what is not. And I want you, the viewer, to be the judge of whether you need to do this step or not. So I've done my face a little bit uneven. There are some things that I've done some things that I've not done, some things that I've overdone, some things that I've underdone. And so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into Makeup 101. First off, you want to start off with a clean face and clean phalanges because if you're following my makeup tips, I use my fingers a lot. A lot of YouTubers will tell you that you have to put on moisturizer before you do anything. I say you don't unless your skin is really, really dry. And if your skin is dry, you will know. You'll be able to feel it. You might even be able to see it if it's extremely dry. I used to have dry skin and I over moisturized like crazy. And then I heard of a thing called a skin fast. And so I backed off on my skincare products. Basically, I just washed my face once at night, once in the morning. I would moisturize as needed, but I barely touched my moisturizer compared to how I used to do, which was slathering on moisturizer like five times a day. And my skin got better. My skin is no longer dry. In fact, I would say that it leans a little oily. And that's because I quit slathering on moisturizer. So take that for what it's worth. I have personally had a lot of extremely negative experiences using drugstore foundation. We're talking like pizza face breakouts. So what I do when I'm curious about a foundation, I go to Sephora and I get a sample. They will give you free samples. They will not give you free foundation samples at Ulta, at least not at the Ultas in my area. So I wouldn't recommend even trying that. Just go to Sephora, um, maybe buy something like a little $5 foot mask or something cheap um, just to be nice because I feel like it's rude to just go in there and ask for a bunch of free samples and not buy anything at all. But this that I'm using right here is the Tarte Babasu Foundation. I used to think it was called Tarte Badass, <laughs> which would have been a much cooler name, but it's the Tarte Babasu Foundation. And I can't remember the exact shade name or number, but I know that it's the second lightest, so I'll put it down here. And the way I'm applying it is just with my finger. And something that I do that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is I'm, I'm not sure, I can't remember if this dries down super fast or not, but I only put foundation in one spot at a time. I basically do my face in quarters. So we're gonna start right here. And I'm not putting a lot on. You can always add more, but it's hard to take away. So I'm just going to put foundation right here and then I'm just gonna blend it with my fingers. Keep in mind, my fingers are very clean. I just washed them. And if you notice, I'm avoiding the immediate under eye area because I am old. If you are not old, you can go ahead and put some foundation right here. But if you're old and you have fine lines, you want to avoid it. And you will hear a lot of people say that you have to use a foundation brush or a beauty blender or your foundation application won't be good. I think that you can use your fingers and I've heard professional makeup artists say that their preferred application technique is their grubby little fingers. And let me talk about all of the different foundation options that there are out there. If you have acne prone skin and you're trying to cover up acne spots or discoloration, then you want something that is more full coverage. If you have pretty good skin, um, you can have more of a light to medium coverage. More of, I like the more satin foundation. I'm not a person who likes a dewy foundation, but you might like that dewy look. Um, it's very youthful, um, which appeals more to older ladies than it does to actual youthful people. 
I personally think it makes you look like you just got out of the gym, so I tend to avoid it, but I also don't like a super, super matte look. And I am genetically blessed, so my skin is pretty good, even for an old lady, so I don't go for super full coverage. So just know your skin type, I mean, know your skin concerns, um, and choose accordingly. Oh, and practice your makeup before you actually go out because depending on how much fallout your eyeshadow has, you might want to do your eyes before you do your face. And when I say fallout, this is what I mean. You see that? And so if I put this on my face, it's gonna get all over my cheeks. The eyeshadow that I'm gonna be using today really does not have fallout. So that's why I went ahead and did my face first. Moving on to the eyes, do you need an eye primer? YouTubers will tell you, yes, you absolutely must prime your eyes. I say maybe, I say it depends on the shadow. I have completely forgotten to prime my eyes and my eyeshadow looked great all day long. There have been other days when I have just neglected to prime my eyes and my eyeshadow kind of melted off. It depends on the shadow and it depends on your skin. And your skin is gonna be different at different times of the month. If you're a lady, if you're a guy, not so much. But I am going to prime my eyes. I'm going to use the Essence I Love Color Intensifying Eye Base. This is cheap. You can get it at Ulta. I think it's $3.99. It might be $4.99, but I mean, it's under $5 and it works really, really well. And the purpose of using an eye primer is to just create kind of a sticky base on your eyelid so that the shadow will be more likely to stick and will show up a little bit better. So I prime one eye at a time. Unless I go back and forth, which maybe I should do. But right now, I, I, the way I do my makeup is I just do one eye at a time. So I am priming the eye that I am working on at the moment. And I will do the other eye when I start working on it. Just because I want the base to be nice and sticky when I start applying the shadow. So when you're applying your eyeshadow, do you start with the darkest shades and then work your way to the lighter shades? Or do you start with the lighter shades and work your way to the darker shades? Or maybe you start in the middle. Me personally, I don't think it matters. I don't think it makes a hill of beans difference. I, I really don't. But a lot of people will tell you, absolutely, you have to start with the darkest shade and work your way to the lightest. Other people will tell you, you have to start with the lightest and work your way to the darkest. I kind of like to start with the darkest, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take this red shade because I heard red mentioned, and, oops, wrong eye. And I'm gonna put it right here on the outer corner. And I'm gonna take this red shade and I'm gonna pull it underneath the eye just a little bit. Now this can be scary. This can be very scary if you're not used to it. So I'm just cleaning up this excess shadow with a damp washcloth. Easy peasy. And I'm going to take this shimmer shade right here called Empress, and I'm going to put it right here on the eye socket bone. What is that called? I'll put it right there. And I am keeping this eye look super, super simple. Keep that in mind. For the next step, a lot of people will tell you that you need a fluffy brush to get this blended. And absolutely, if you use a fluffy brush to blend this together, that works really well. You can also do this. And what I'm going for is kind of a cut crease, but not exactly a cut crease. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a really light shimmer shade right here, and I'm using a flat, um, they, they sometimes call these packing brushes, but I'm using a flat eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna take this shimmery pinky shade right here called Babe. I'm gonna coat my brush. So I like to use MAC Fix Plus to spray my brush, but you can use any kind of setting spray. If you're using a shimmer shadow, it really does help to spray your brush. And I also feel like I need to intensify this deeper shade called Mythy, so I'm gonna use my finger. I find that that is your best friend when you really want to pack on the shadow. So 
So there is a makeup technique called a cut crease. If you're thinking about the full cut crease that you might see on Instagram, that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing what I call a pseudo cut crease. I'm only cutting my crease a little bit. I've also heard this called a partial cut crease, but even a partial cut crease or a half cut crease is a little more professional than I am. So I just call it a pseudo cut crease. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of this Revolution cut crease canvas. I'm putting it on a flat brush because if you just use this applicator, see how much product is on here. It's just going to get all over the place. It's going to make a mess. So I just put a teeny tiny bit on a makeup brush and then I'm just going to carve out this area. I'm going to take this up to try to keep my deep set eyes out of the shadow. And I'm not gonna take it all the way across, I'm just gonna go about maybe a third of the way. So let's call this a one third cut crease. And what you're doing here is you're just laying down a base for a very light or very shimmery shadow so that your eyes will, in theory, pop. I'm gonna take this shimmer shade called Babe, just like I did on the other eye, and I'm going to spray it with MAC Fix Plus, just like I did on the other eye, and paint. So on this eye, I did use the cut crease technique. On this eye, I did not. So you judge for yourself whether it makes a difference. Now, I usually don't film this step, but I'm gonna do it today. I'm just gonna line my upper lash line, and I'm not gonna use the product that I usually use because it's kind of expensive. I'm just using a pencil, a black pencil liner. And I'm making the line pretty thick near the edge of the eye, and in fact, I'm drawing a tiny little wing out here. That's optional. And then I'm making it a lot thinner near the inner corner. Now you will hear a ton of people on YouTube tell you that an essential step in your makeup routine is tight lining. Let me show you what that is. That is taking the pencil and going under your lashes on the inner rim of your eye. In my opinion, you really don't need to do this. I mean, if you're posing for a magazine, you're going to have professional makeup artists doing your makeup. You're not going to have to worry about it. If you're just going out, I really don't think anybody cares. I really don't think anybody will notice. But if you're posting a picture on the gram, you probably want to do this. Me personally, I don't care. And now we've come to another slightly scary step that big beauty gurus and pretty much most YouTubers will tell you that you have to do to make your eyes really stand out, and that is putting a light, bright shade in the waterline. I call it waterlining. Now, do you need to do this? No, I forget to do this all the time, but I really like my eye makeup when I do remember to do it. It looks cool, it does kind of brighten your eyes, but it's not totally necessary. So having said that, I am going to show you the difference that it actually makes. I'm going to put this very light shimmery pink by Tarina Tarantino in this waterline and I'm going to leave this one blank. Waterline, not waterline you be the judge of whether that makes a difference or which one you like better. Maybe you like that little extra bit of shimmer. Maybe you want a little bit more natural look. So again, you be the judge. You can also use a darker shade and give yourself more of a smoky eye look. So I'm just gonna take a plain black pencil liner and I'm gonna do the waterline on my right eye in black and we're gonna, we're gonna see what that looks like. Again, if you're going to use a shade in your waterline, try to swatch the liner in the store on your hand and you want something that packs a lot of color when you press very, very lightly because you do not want to be pressing hard for this step. So here's the more sultry, smoky look and here's the brighter look. Which one do you prefer? So for your eyelashes, most people can just use mascara and it'll look great. My eyelashes are short, they are sparse, 
and they are light. And so I always have to use falsies. Do you have to use falsies? No, absolutely not. If you would rather have a little bit more drama in your eye look, then you can buy Kiss lashes at the drugstore. I really like that brand. You can go to Sephora and you can get Huda Beauty or Tarte lashes and they're going to be beautiful. I believe these are from House of Lashes, which you can also get at Sephora. So I'm just going to kind of leave the lashes up to you. If, if your lashes are good, you can get away with just using mascara. If your lashes aren't so good, like mine, then you're probably going to need some falsies. And I do have some videos on eyelash applications that I will link in the card. But yeah, I drop the F-bomb and I make some dirty jokes. So a lot of people will tell you that you need to bronze your face up here and along here and kind of you run it along the jawline to give you that definition. I don't do that. You can if you want to. There are other videos on that. I don't think it's essential. I don't like the way it looks on me. So all I do, um, I don't bronze, I just contour. And there's a subtle difference. Bronzing is when you're warming up your face and adding some, dim and adding some dimension. Contouring is when you're just um, bringing out, like chiseling your features basically. So a lot of people will take their contour on a big fluffy brush and just go like this. That's not what I do. I do this. So where my cheeks hollow out, that's where I'm putting my contour. Now I generally don't like to use powder blush. I usually just use a cream blush and put it on with my fingers. And there are a lot of different ways you can put on your blush. Um, some people will tell you to just take it all the way up here. Some people will tell you to just concentrate on the apples of your cheeks, like smile. And just put it right here. Um, I do something somewhere in between. But I mean blush is blush. I, I feel like that's a pretty self-explanatory step. And you don't want to look like a clown. You just want to look naturally flushed, which in theory makes you look more attractive. If you can, like find a guy or a girl that you have a crush on and talk to them and have them say something flattering to you and then look in the mirror and look at your face and see where you get red. And that's where your blush should go. But that's probably way too involved. And then I'm going to use some highlighter. I'm going to take some ColourPop highlighter. I'm not going to use my soulmate husband highlighter, my Smashbox highlighter, because that's a little bit more on the expensive side. And I'm just going to take my finger. A lot of people like to use brushes for this. I don't because I'm a filthy animal. And then also a lot of people take their highlighter and they wrap it all the way around. You know what? I'll do that. I'll show you how a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it like this. And then I'm just taking a random brush and I'm trying to just get this all blended together. I don't even know if that shows up. But yeah, you'll see a lot of people take their highlighter all the way and wrap it way up their cheekbone and all the way up to their forehead. I don't do that. The way I do my highlighter is I look at my face and I see where the light naturally bounces off of my cheek. And I see it bouncing off right here. So that's all the highlighter that I use. Oh, and I forgot to mention mascara on the lower lashes. I usually forego that step. Sometimes I'm in the mood for it, sometimes not. But I do feel like not defining your lower lashes can make your eyes a little bit brighter. I feel like having that extra darkness underneath it can kind of take away from the brightness, but I'm going to show you one eye with lower lash mascara and one eye without, and I will let you be the judge. So here we have with lower lash mascara and without. To me, if I were in a play and I were on stage, I would go for this look. Or if I were going for a night out, maybe, I might want some more drama, I might do this. But for everyday wear, I prefer this. But that's a personal preference, so I wanted to show you both application styles and let you choose which one you prefer. And as for lipstick, a lot of people will tell you that you want a cool toned lipstick if you have a cool toned eye look, that certain lip 
undertones will clash with certain eye looks. I say just pick a lipstick that makes you feel pretty, that you like. And if you're not sure what color you like, a lot of places will give you like those little blister packs where they'll have a couple of different shades that you can try out. Or you can go get like two or three really cheap lipsticks and some very different shades. Try them, see which one works for you, and really just wear a lipstick that you like. So I'm gonna go for, um, I'm going to go for my favorite color today. I'm going to go for ColourPop's Super Bloom. This is a reddish pink lipstick and it's my favorite. So here's my finished look. I felt like that was pretty easy peasy. If I came across as being really critical of YouTubers who insist that their way is the only way, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm just imagining if I were new to makeup and I watched some big beauty guru, guru I would be like, oh my gosh, I need 50 different products and I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. Oh my gosh, it's going to take me two hours to do my makeup every single morning and I would be overwhelmed and I'm here to tell you you do not need that you do not need all those steps you do not need all those products you need to figure out what works for you what makes you happy um, and I tried to show with and without these essential steps and I want you to be the judge of whether or not you want to take the time to do that step so that wraps it up for today. As always, thank you so very much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram. I will follow you back. Throw me a pity like. Give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Very special shout out to you if you are watching this video on the toilet. And until next time, stay adorably obsessed with makeup.